Hello everyone, we are Andreu and Junting, and we are going to present the topic called clock gating. This is the outline that we are going to follow. First, we will explain the motivation for using the clock gating technique. Then, we will provide you some implementation examples, and later we will talk about application examples. And finally, some conclusions will be presented. So, as we know, one of the main concerns in electronics is power consumption. We are interested in reducing it, but what can we do? Let's focus on dynamic power consumption, which is the main source of power consumption in most of the cases. And specifically, let's focus on the switching power. We know that by analyzing the inverter circuit, we find a relation of the switching power with the capacitance, the square of the supply voltage, and the switching frequency. So, uh, to reduce the power consumption, we could reduce the supply voltage. But as we know, uh, the delay of the circuit would increase, and this means that the circuit would be slower. So instead, we would uh, another solution would be to decrease the switching frequency by periodically disabling the clock. This is equivalent to introduce an activity factor to the switching power equation. So, what is clock gating? Clock gating is a technique to reduce the dynamic power consumption, and it is based on disabling the clock when it is not necessary uh, to use it, and this will decrease the switching frequency. For this purpose, a circuit will be used as a gate to control uh, the clock activity. For example, in this case, if the input of a flip-flop is the same as, i as in the previous clock cycle, the output is not changing, and so maybe the clock is not needed uh, in these cases. So, how it works? A basic implementation of the clock gating could be uh, using a logical AND gate. The input of this gate are a clock signal and an enable signal uh, that can come from another combinational circuit. The output uh, of the AND gate is the gated clock signal, which is used as a clock for another circuit. In this case, for example, the other circuit is a flip-flop. If, if the enable signal is active, the clock uh, will be enabled, and if the enable signal is zero, then the clock will be disabled. What can go wrong? Remember that the enable signal was coming from another combinational circuit, so it may, be, uh, it may have glitches. When the AND operation is performed, the glitches of the enable signal can be propagated to the gated clock signal, and this would lead to problems. To avoid this situation, we can use a flip-flop to input the enable signal and then the same AND gate as before. The idea is the same, but this time the enable signal will only change the gated clock signal during a clock rising age. So, because this time the enable signal is, synchroni uh, is synchronized, in this case, we don't have the same glitches as in the previous case. We can see that in the first case, we had uh, two clock rising edges instead of one, while in the second case, the gated clock signal is produced properly. So, this is an example of uh, another, another clock gating implementation, this time for a flip-flop circuit. Uh, if the output is the same as the input, then we don't need to perform any operation, because the output will remain the same. The XOR gate of the circuit will produce a zero each time the input and output of the flip-flop are equal. This means that the input of the latch will be zero, and so the input of the second uh, AND gate will uh, be zero, and the clock will be disabled. If the input and the output of the flip-flop are different, then the XOR will produce a 1 at the output, and the clock will be enabled. Applications The first application example is a synchronous controller. The scheme below shows a 4-bit binary controller, where QA to QD are output bits. This is the chronogram of the circuit, and the output value change at every triggering time of the clock signal. Here we have the conventional counter, but the clock 
a change by a local clock managed by a clock gating circuit. It becomes active only when the flip-flop needs to change its value. This is the chronogram of the clock gated converter. For CK means a clock and LC0 to LC3 are the local clock. Output bits are Q0 to Q3. Initially, all the output values are set to 0 and it counts from 0 to 8. When the clock transition are high, the local clock pulls on. The output switch at every triggering edge of its local clock. As you can see, every time we add one bit with the counter, for every clock cycle, the LC0 is always switching and Q0 is changing continuously, just like a conventional counter. To see more clearly the difference of a clock gated counter, let's observe on the Q3 the most significant bit. Counting from 0 to 8, the value of Q3, the most significant bit, only switch once. In this case, our clock gating circuit performing in a very smart way with the LC3, the Google Code 3, only switch once. The clock gating circuit, compared to the conventional counter, it avoids all the redundant trans transitions. This graphic solves the total power consumption of the counter. The horizontal axis are the different circuit configurations. And as we can observe here, a big difference in terms of power consumption between a counter with and without clock gating techniques. The other application example is a microprocessor, where the clock gating is applied to everywhere. In this table, we can see the total power consumption by all the component under study. And the second column shows the conventional microprocessor and power consuming. And the next column, the third column, shows the component power consumption with clock gating circuit. And as we can see, we are saving a total of almost 36% of the total power using clock gating techniques. Summarizing the clock gating techniques, we see that it reduces the dynamic power consumption of the circuit. It eliminates redundant switching. And some simulation and study shows that with clock gating techniques, it can achieve power saving of more than 30%. These are some reference that we used. Thanks for your attention.